is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, if you contemplate and, and the state, uh, more broadly, uh, if you if you look at what's about to transpire, we have five metro projects, five different stages of metro, uh, either being planned for, near completion, uh, construction underway, uh, and that is something which is, you know, very special. The reason it's very special is that it's recognition that our existing passenger rail network in Sydney has been outstripped by the needs of our community. The existing heavy rail network is about 155 years old, uh, and it has served Sydney incredibly well. But it's this government that took our decision to actually build a new standalone passenger rail network for the city, for city. And we have no choice. Our population growth is phenomenal. Uh, and, and let me give you this stat, which um, you know very few people know, but um, Sydney trains, 155 years old. In 2013, it was carrying 308 million passenger trips a year. So over the life of those 150 years, 308 million passenger trips. Last month, that number surpassed 406 million passenger trips. So 100 million additional passenger trips on Sydney trains in the last five years, growth of 30%, demonstrates that people are opting to use public transport because we're clean enough. But more importantly, the demanding growth for trains has shot through the roof. And thank goodness, Gladys took that decision to hit go on a new style of passenger rail system. And there are some big differences between the double deck trains, which are terrible in terms of getting people on and off, because the doors are at the end of the carriage, carriages, to now a single deck, three door, fully automated driverless train that has the capacity into the future to do one of two things. Firstly, deliver a train to a station every two minutes. And secondly, carry up to 46,000 passengers per hour, which compares to the existing heavy rail network of around 24,000 passengers per hour. Now this new network that we're building, uh, in essence extends from Talawong Station to the west of Rouse Hill to Chatham. That's the first stage, and that'll be open uh, as of the second quarter of next year. The second stage is Metro City. And anyone who's been into town will see that there's buildings that have now been flattened. There is very extensive uh, construction work now underway on Metro City. It's in essence a tunnel that extends from Sydney, uh, sorry, I'll start at Chatswood. Chatswood, through to Victoria Cross Station in North Sydney, under the harbour to Barangaroo, through to Martin Place, Pitt Street, a new metro station in the harbour central, a stop at Waterloo, where the city is gentrifying incredibly, and then on to Sydney. The next stage, which is also going to be built concurrently, is Metro Southwest, which in essence is the conversion, similar to what you're having in Epping of Chatswood, Rathen. Um, where we're going to convert the Bankstown line to a metro train as well. It's called Metro Southwest. Then on top of that, the government has also announced we're going to build a metro between, in essence, the city and Parramatta. We're actually going to extend it out to Westman. Uh, and we're doing extensive final business case work at the moment. Three billion dollars set aside in this year's budget to start the work. And it, and it is truly a mega project as well. Um, it'll be the biggest uh, project that the state has built in the transport and road space there, uh, Metro West. And then of course, uh, I've been invited to see the Commonwealth to build a Metro train uh, around the new Batteries Creek Airport, which will extend from the airport to St Mary's, and that's the first stage of that. So that's what's happening in the Metro space. Um, you know, I, I flew in on a Rex plane last night over Sydney, and I can see a massive excavation where the tunnel boring machine uh, is being constructed at the moment. It'll start building this tunnel. 
in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, and a, a phenomenal number of concrete uh, casings have been built, which will also align that time. So <coughs> it, is a, it is a game changer. And when services start to operate, and people experience the difference uh, between Sydney Metro and the heavy rail network as we know it, uh, life is going to be phenomenally different. The city will breathe. We'll start to bust congestion. And it's not only metro, it's of course uh, major motorways which will also start to come online in the next two years as well. Uh, West Connects, uh, North Connects, linking the M1 and the M2, 9 kilometre tunnel under Pennant Hills Road. Uh, and then of course, uh, Light Rock, which uh, unfortunately has had a little bit of bad publicity. But let me tell you, if you look at what's happened with the inner west light rail, where in a space of four years we've gone from five million passenger trips to ten million passenger trips, uh, it's, it's the type of localised transport solution uh, in terms of people movement which, which people use and they, they love. Uh, and whilst we've had a problem with one contractor in the city, it doesn't reflect the $87 billion four year program that we've got in place and all the $110 million of infrastructure we've delivered. Now, I can go and throw those numbers around as much as I like. The fact is that when I talk about infrastructure and I talk about billions of dollars, I'm typically talking about 50,000 people who get to go to work every day on one of our construction sites, get money in their pocket, food on their table, family fed, kids to school, uh, and a contribution to our society and our economy. And that's what infrastructure is all about. Stimulus in terms of what it brings, the opportunities that it brings, uh, are absolutely phenomenal. And sorry to sound political, but our political opponents, like Foley and the Labor Party, have made it clear that they're going to go and cancel a number of key projects. For what reason? Well, I can only say I think it's class warfare between the East and the West. But I get it coming from the country, but, you know, I mean, what is this? Luke Foley should not be cancelling Northern Beaches Tunnel, West Harbour Tunnel, um, South West Metro. He has publicly stood up and said that, and that's tens of thousands of jobs. And typically they're people from Western Sydney who are working on those work sites. So he should not cut off the nose despite the face of the state. Uh, we need these projects. We need to keep delivering infrastructure because the city is going to grow by another 2 million people in the next 20 years. What I, you know, I hate to say it, but this part of Sydney um, has been one in which the growth has been phenomenal because of decisions made previously by local government and former state governments without the appropriate infrastructure plan. We've had to retrofit. We've had to announce new interchanges in the Park in combination with the, the feds, and that final business case will be completed by the end of the year. Uh, we've had to convert um, that badly managed program of the last Labor government where they promised a chat with the Parramatta rally and somehow only managed to build half of it. Well, fortunately for us, their incompetence means we can now clean it up and actually convert it to a metro. That's the irony of it. And that's what we're going to do as of uh, the 30th of September, which Tony touched. Now, there is a challenge. And I thank you all in advance for working with Mark on this project. Uh, a temporary transport strategy is never easy because people have to change. They've got to change their thinking around their, their trap. Uh, never easy to do. Uh, we have managed it in a very substantial way in the last couple of years when we completely overhauled the city's bus network. And the reason we were successful in that is because we were able to do an intensive consultation process beforehand, similar to what you've had here. We've been able to do and use trip planning apps in a way that we've never been able to see before. So people are actually able to plan an event. Uh, and we've already had an extraordinary number of hits, over 4 million hits already in terms of looking at this temporary transport plan. <coughs> which gives me hope, because it won't be easy. We know that there will be additional cars travelling into Macquarie Park as of next week, as we turn off the trains between it and Chatsworth. 
But the government hasn't sat on its hands and said, well, let's see what happens. We've done extensive bus and train planning around us. We've separated the T1 Northern and the T1 North Shoreline very deliberately, uh, which gives us greater capacity to run more express services around the, down the T1 Northern line in the town, uh, from hey, the Central Coast, starting the Central Coast, but obviously from main stations such as Epic. Uh, we are obviously uh, going to be having more services in place uh, on our trains to be able to cater for the fact that the train line between Epping and Chatsworth is closed. And we're urging people to use trains as opposed to buses. So if you've got the option of planning a trip around a train, please do it. We've also acquired 124 brand new station link buses, which are running across five different routes across the, the network to link those stations. Uh, there'll be 110 services an hour uh, running to support those 20,000 people that would normally and otherwise catch the train. Now, the sticky point in all this is, of course, Macquarie Park, which is why uh, we're very much urging people to, to plan, uh, if possible, uh, avoid the shoulders of the peak, uh, try and get to work if it's possible earlier or later, start or finish earlier or later so there isn't as much pressure between the peak hours. But we can make this work. And I outline the reason why we have to do this, because we have to build city metro. There is no option uh, in terms of the growth in the city. We have to put the new metro train in. Now, I've heard all sorts of things about how this build will happen between Epping and Chatsworth. Um, I've heard that you know, the tunnels have to be changed, that the track's got to be ripped up and all these things. Nah. We can keep using the existing track. So it's 13, uh, I think it's 1,380 millimetres to go. Uh, that remains. So we're not touching the rail. What we have to do, though, in terms of uh, the systems, is, is put in place the systems which can deliver a driverless train. Uh, so safety systems, uh, the operation, and all those types of things, uh, signalling, uh, all that gets converted, uh, which will happen as of this Sunday. And one of the greatest features of the new Metro train, uh, which I think is critically important, uh, is we're now going to have glass screens on the sides of the, of the platform. There is nothing more heartbreaking as Minister than to receive a message about a personal tragedy on a railway. And uh, the best thing about those glass screens is they pull the community back from the rail uh, And they have to be erected uh, and put on the station platforms as well as part of this. And then we have commissioning and testing of the vehicle. Uh, the trains themselves, and that that in itself uh, is where a lot of the months ahead the work happens, because these trains have to be put through so much testing, so much commissioning uh, before we put a passenger on. So that's that's the work that's ahead uh, over the next seven months. Um, it's not a major infrastructure rebuild, which is why I can tell you with confidence it can be delivered on time. Um, and I can assure you, given the way in which this Metro project has been built, the professionalism and the teams involved, uh, from Sydney Metro within transport through to the teams of people involved in North, uh, North West Rapid Transit, uh, these people know what they're doing. Uh, and uh, I have absolutely full confidence in this. So, I mean, this project, uh, in terms of its delivery, is more than half a billion dollars under budget. The tunneling uh, was 10 months ahead of schedule. Uh, the technology is phenomenal, <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I've seen it, uh, I've seen what is going on behind the scenes, and uh, you know, this, this short term pain delivering a very significant long term benefit is absolutely going to be good. So thank you for your patience um, and thank you for what you've done in advance of uh, the commencement come Sunday. <coughs> Mark Prendergast, um, I'm going to say some nice things about her. She is without doubt one of the best people I've ever worked with. Uh, and uh, I can assure you you are in great hands as we get through this construction disruption. Um, we're experts at it. 
we've turned the city into a construction site. But it is going to kick and it's going to change phenomenally for everybody uh, in the next couple of years. Uh, and the city that we know will be a very much a tomorrow city being delivered today. Tony, I've been taking questions. <laughs>